Good evening, this is Kuro. Got a tier 8 game and my tier 7 moss. Going over the matchmaking, we have an enemy Ryujo, a Cleveland, Otago and Leander. They are uh, heavy close in fire threat if you get spotted. Uh, the main threat, the destroyer, Z23, Kiev, Sims, and Egglay. Basically all of these ships. Uh, Kiev, Sims, Egglay all have more DPM. Uh, Z23, it, it's just a ton of hit points to try to burn through. Um, and uh, that basically means that, you know, you'd be exposed for an extended period of time trying to, to pick that fight unless you can work something out where you're working from smoke or something like that. Uh, it is a CV game, so what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to push up with my team. Um... It's a standard battle on Neighbors. Neighbors typically breaks down into one of two things. You typically have the teams either go north or the teams go south. One of the two. Sometimes you end up with a, a clockwise thing. Sometimes you end up with both teams running into each other. And then kind of just whoever wins the firepower advantage. Uh, is able to keep pushing the other just kites back <clears throat> so I am gonna talk a little bit about the Moss right here Moss like all the other German destroyers I consider more of a torpedo boat than a gunboat and because I consider it a torpedo boat I'm actually gonna pause it right here because this is this is already critical information um, because it's a torpedo boat I need certain things to be successful in a game and one of that is I want to be in front of or to the side of the enemy push and what I'm seeing here is it's not gonna happen uh, if you look you've got the Kiev Z23 both of these things I don't really want to fight you've got the the only radar ship the the Cleveland down here only one battleship so that's telling me that, you know, refer back to basic arithmetic. These four ships versus all of these, it's it's not going to be a contest. The, they're going to end up kiting, and if I stay here, I'm going to have a poor game. So what do you do in this situation where you look at a flank and you're just like, there's nothing here? Well, in my opinion a valid solution is go elsewhere and I'm looking right here just to see if there's any other cruisers or any any other thing that's gonna pop up this way and it's it's just not there and you can already see this this lion is gonna start kiting back as soon as he gets shot at and I'm right here I'm making my decision that you know what there's nothing here so I'm going to turn back and the reason why this is important all of this is cleared space me kiting back I'm staying safe if I if I try to turn in there's the chance that I run into a destroyer or something like that and end up in a fight that I really didn't want to have um, since I'm disengaging so turning back and I'm just gonna pop speed boost and I'm just gonna start moving south and you can see more more ships are being spotted in the south and that's telling me that okay arithmetic wise this flank is gonna need support this flanks you can already see the lion kiting back you've got an Otago and a Leandra that are pushing up in the middle and you know on the on the surface of things right now this makes it look like I'm I'm kinda being taken out of the battle right now but I'm being I'm positioning myself where I can be useful if you look already they're in full kite mode over here I'm shaking my my uh, camera because this Egglay is throwing his ship away uh, we're not even four minutes into the game and a DD's already throwing himself away 
uh, trying to rush down this Otago. And that's just, yeah, he gets the Otago, but that's such a questionable play. Uh, it's, it's really, in my opinion, it's not worth it. You have so much late game potential, you know, why waste that on four minutes of battle? I, I, I don't understand it, but, you know, c'est la vie. So right here, we've got, we've got all four DD spotted. That's telling me I can push into this direction, at least for a little bit. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to pick this Leander up so maybe somebody can lob something at him over some islands or something and hit this guy. Uh, I don't like what I see here. I'm calling target on the egg lay, and I'm going to start pinging these guys to pull back. The Wichita, the Lennon, the Amagi. The reason being, the... I guess the easiest, uh, I, I, I refer to it as body language. I'm going to pause it right here because I'm going to talk about uh, reading a ship's intention. And if you're going to be a, a proficient uh, torpedo, if you're, if you're going to be pro proficient in using torpedoes, you need to understand the intent or reading the body language of, of a ship. And... This particular body language here with this destroyer screamed, I'm just going to YOLO in and torp somebody. And, again, it's really questionable in my opinion why you would want to do that. Um, I'm pushing up, maybe I can help, and here he comes. I mean, he's, he's already spotted. Um, now my positioning I'm finally arriving where I want to be and that is you know here comes the battleship push now the issue that I'm having this serpents he's already through the gap if you if you checked his indicator it's already into the island so on on the surface I can't really torp this uh, this turpit but I can torp the Amagi and a lot of times this actually has some benefits because a ship that is following another ship tends to feel more comfortable about their situation. They're less prone to make any sort of, you know, random maneuvers, that kind of thing, because this ship, in their opinion, is drawing the bulk of the attention, the bulk of the fire, and they're just kind of riding the coattails there for the, the ride. Now, the other thing to know, even though these ships are outside my torpedo range right now, uh, the angle that I'm at, if you look at these ships, follow their direction lines, and you can see where they intersect with my torpedo range. Uh, and you can you can start to, to to figure out, you know, roughly in your head when you can launch torps at targets that are going to push into your torps, and you can do that by taking your your the uh, the reticle for aiming your torpedoes and you put that on the indicator and that will match it up to the mini map you can see uh, this is this line right out of the bow of my ship is my direction of travel this is the indicator so he's a little a little far or uh, I'm a little short of the indicator so you know roughly right in here is where the indicator for the Amagi is at right now um, and that's going to tell me that uh, right now, most likely 10.8 kilometers, he's most likely outside of my torpedo range. His speed does factor into it. Turpits and Amagi, both pretty fast battleships. So I, I do know that I've got some flexibility. I don't think this guy's going full speed though. And that's, that's the issue. If he was going full speed, uh, it would be a really close shot. Usually I would, I would, if I was had to launch from max range, I would I would try to launch from like 10 kilometers, and that would usually get it into range with a, you know one of these battleships, a Turpitz or an Amagi, sailing full speed this direction. But I'm just gonna keep stalking into this situation. Now I'm gonna get hosed here because the Sims is gonna pop up. 
um, and blow my basically my torpedo cover I know it's blown right now I'm just gonna launch it anyway you can already see the turpits healing over and he's gonna start rushing me I'm gonna go on ahead pop smoke once I see the turpit shot gonna pop uh, hydro to keep myself torpedo safe And I'm just going to start going to work. And uh, Moss with five guns, you don't have very good firing arcs, but it is a decent amount of firepower at Tier 7. The torpedoes on the, this ship is fantastic for this level of work. Uh, I could switch to AP here, but honestly, I don't want to lose the fraction of a second for the, uh, the quicker reload. So I basically just keep throwing... I threw that extra HE shot into the turpits and then just rotate over to the Amagi. Now, again, these, these ships have really fast torpedo reloads. Now, I've got an issue coming up right here, and that is I've got a cruiser that's being suicidal. Um, <clears throat> this Wichita has no chance at bow tanking this Amagi. He's giving his broadside to a Leander. There's a lot of issues going on here. His smart play is just hold right there and just, you know, reverse, try to angle. And honestly, I would just back around the island and work on the lander. Uh, that's not really what's going to happen. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm looking right now, seeing what he's trying to do. And, uh... You know, I am going to make a controversial decision right here. I see him slowing right here, and I've made my, my decision. I'm going to be launching torpedoes. And I'm going to be launching torpedoes because I see this guy turn. I don't think he's going to hit him. But the issue is, this guy's this guy's dead. He, he doesn't look like it now, but he's, he's done. I mean... You've got this Amagi whose guns are, are just about on target. You got Sims torpedoes coming in, and he's broadside to the Leander here. I know my cursor's jumping around quite a bit. He's just got himself crossfired every which way that you can. And you look, he's already just chopped up. And he's not even looking at the Leander that's just laying into him, and the Amagi finishes him off. And. In my, and you can see that those two torpedo hits, if I hadn't launched my torpedoes, we would be dealing with a healthy, high-tier battleship that's disengaged. He's going to be able to repair, and uh, within a couple minutes, he'll be able to repush this flank again. And uh, this game is still somewhat close right now. I think they're only down the ship right now. Uh, because he ate torpedoes, you know, this guy's in serious trouble. I don't think he has a repair because two torpedo hits without a flood. Kind of rare even in a German DD. So I'm just going to start going to town on this guy. Uh, the Sims was ignoring me. So as long as the Sims isn't shooting me, you know, I'm just going to keep going for it. I do pick up the fire. I'm thinking that that might have put him down, and then one of the battleships comes in, the Lennon comes in, puts him down. Uh, now, right here, I am expecting a uh, an engagement that I, I don't really want to have right now. Um, at least not a, a stand-up fight. And it's not going to be a stand-up fight because I got help with this lightning. Uh, but it's the Sims. The Sims is... Uh, a even though it's only got four guns, I believe it has more close-in DPM than my ship. It's damn sight more maneuverable. Uh, so what's going to happen? I'm getting my shots out. want to try to break this ship up the best I can. Break modules. Just got his engine. Uh, now, I you notice, I, I smoked up pretty quickly. And I was pre-planning this smoke that I was going to push in this direction the best I can. I actually wanted to get over a little a little further. The reason being, I've got Hydro. 
And even though this is a defensive hydro, it's only got a four kilometer ship acquisition range. Um, this Sims has started smoking up, but either he's unaware that he's pretty much in a trap right now. Um, I'm going to go on ahead and uh, be able to hydro this guy. And it's going to be a, a fairly decent example of how you can still use this hydro against targets that uh, you otherwise wouldn't consider. I mean, most people don't think, you know, these low-tier German DDs, well, this is more mid-tier, have, uh, you know, a usable hydro against ships. And I, I use them quite frequently. Uh, to defend my smoke ships that are trying to push my smoke screen uh, things like that you've got until I believe 2.9 kilometers for your your smoke firing concealment and then after that don't don't spoil the fun you know you've probably got torpedoes reloaded because your torpedo reload is really fast um, just use the the advantage that you have vision on the enemy you've get, you're concealed you know back up get ahead of speed if you've got engine boost pop it and just p pop out of the smoke point blank and just torp them when the time comes and uh, it, it can be really effective so we're a little out of the fight right now but uh We've secured this flank. <clears throat> and, you know, just, just going to take this time to note, well, my team's hunting down this North Carolina. Um, none of this would have been possible if I would have stayed in the north. Um, I would have basically been dealing with ships kiting back. And with only 8.5 kilometer torps with a 6.8 kilometer surface detection, you're really going to struggle to do anything. You're going to have to rely on your guns a lot to try to be productive that game uh, in the north. And just by simply taking the couple minutes to reposition, I turned a game that would be uh, a struggle to be productive into, you know, currently a 111,000 damage game. Now, I thought I was going to be able to spot this Ryujo. So, I turned to start opening up my guns to try to get more and more, uh, more of my guns on target. Now, on the Moss, you can get three guns have pretty good forward arcs. It's that, that stern gun is just crap when it comes to its firing arc. Uh, and I see that, nope, I'm still not in detection range for this guy, so got to turn bow in again and, and try to chase this guy down a little bit more. Uh, now, I could be using AP here. Um, honestly, uh, if I could do it over again, I wish I would, so you could see some of, uh, the AP DPM. Uh, at this tier, you're not generally going to be using your AP against destroyers unless they're high tier, uh, particularly tier 9, so you, you just don't have armor thick enough to really be able to, uh, to punish these guys. I'm having some funky dispersion wh where I'm aiming you know, below the top of the hole and sh sh all my shells are flying over it. That's always fun. Uh, but take a look at my AP tutorial that I have, and that'll give you an idea. Uh, and I always recommend, especially with the German DDs, um, when you first unlock a ship, take it out into the training room and give the AP a rundown. See what DDs you know you can pen which ones you can't see what it you know the areas to hit on battleships uh on cruisers the the bows and the sterns you want to hit the bright areas of the ship obviously for the most damage uh any area that's black is saturated you're going to do reduced levels of damage 
uh, the upper belt superstructure, all of those are really good typical AP uh, spots to hit. Uh, again, uh, it's very unusual for me to, to use my guns this much and not use AP. I just happen to be the you know the the one usable game that I got out of out of Moss this week. Uh, I didn't use AP at all to to demonstrate it. Uh, but anyway, I I really do like this ship. Uh, it's been a keeper of mine for since the German line came out. Uh, this wasn't with a 19 point captain. I do have one for Moss. Uh, I wanted this to be a, a more accurate representation, so I basically put a, I think this was a 15 point captain, uh, that I threw on it, and, uh, just to try to give you guys a, uh, a closer idea to how this ship is going to perform when you're grinding, and yes, I understand, uh, 15 points is a little higher than I would, I would think that you would be at with, uh, tier 7. I think you'd be at like a 13 or 14 point captain, but it gets you in the ballpark. Uh, so there's that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, more than happy to answer them. Hope you guys are having a good night, and I will talk to you later. And uh, by the way, remember, sail where the damage is. Sail where your ship can be uh, most effective. That's, that's huge to... Uh, pulling the uh, making destroyers more consistent or more consistent stat wise for you so talk to you guys later have a good night